Are you tired of getting robocalls? Well, the government, they're trying to do something about it. Stephanie Condon with uh, ZDNet has been looking into this and specifically what lawmakers are considering. So Stephanie, just start with how big of a problem are robocalls today? Um, well, as I'm sure most people know, the robocall problem just keeps getting worse. And um, Congress cited a lot of stats to prove this point. In 2018, the FCC actually received more than 230 consumer complaints about unwanted calls, and that's a, an increase of more than 34% since 2015. <clears throat> so, um, you know, some other st stats cited by Congress are that, um, according to one estimate in 2018, there were 48 billion robocalls, which is up 64% since 2016. Um, so for anyone who feels like they've been getting more robocalls, they probably are. Okay, Stephanie, expand a little bit on the bill itself. Uh, what would the bill do? Yeah, so the Stopping Bad Robocalls Act, which the House passed uh, yesterday, uh, take several steps to try and approach this problem. First of all, it closes a bunch of loopholes. Um, people may not realize this, but it's actually already technically illegal in many cases for companies to call you to send you a robocall without your explicit consent. Um, but there are a lot of exemptions. For instance, a financial company <clears throat> like your credit card company could send you a robocall about um, credit card activity that seems potentially fraudulent. So that's a totally legal case. Um, but as you can imagine, a lot of companies are taking advantage of the loopholes. Uh, plus, <clears throat> some companies just send you way too many robocalls. So um, this bill would really tighten up the exemptions and it would make it harder for companies to, um, to take advantage of of uh, the situation, uh, limiting how many phone calls you can get, how many robocalls a single person can get and stuff like that. When a company does break the rules, uh, the spill would make it easier for law enforcement to go after rule breakers, um, increasing fines, uh, raising the statute of, statute of limitations. So those are all good steps. Um, it also would require uh, wireless carriers to make some changes. It would require them to um, implement new technology to better authenticate caller ID. So that effectively takes on call spoofing. You know, when you get a call um, that looks like a number you may recognize, but it turns out that's a fake number. So um, <clears throat> the FCC was actually already planning on having carriers implement this new technology, but this bill takes an extra step of ensuring that uh, carriers have to do this without extra line item costs for customers. So no extra charges for that new technology. It would also uh, require carriers um, when they uh, implement call blocking by default that they don't charge you extra for that as well. So we've got some consumer protections in there. And there are also some kind of like interesting um, specific items. Like I didn't realize that robocalls have been a big problem for hospitals lately. Um, doctors will get robocalls when they're on call, um, and patients will get calls disguised as hospital officials um, by, you know, companies sending out these robocalls. So this bill tackles that particular uh, problem and helps um, wireless carriers in the hospital industry figure out best practices and ways to combat that problem. Okay, and Stephanie, talk a little bit about the support behind the bill, or how likely do you think it is that it will actually become a law? So, you know, no one likes robocalls, and that's true in Congress as well. In the House yesterday, the bill passed by 429 to 3, so only two Republicans and one independent voted against it. Um, and actually, the Senate already passed uh, a version of this legislation <clears throat> earlier this year, and it also passed with overwhelming support um, by a vote of 97 to 1, one Republican and in both the House and the Senate, the opposition came from um, libertarians. So I guess, you know, um, that's not surprising to see, um, you know, the people who are opposed to government interference um, taking a stand against these new rules. Um, but since it has such overwhelming support, it should be pretty easy for the House and Senate to um, merge these two bills and uh, get it to the president's desk for the signature. So hopefully, um, you know, this can go into law pretty quickly and actually make a difference. 
Okay, and what about uh, experts you know, within the industry and outside of it? What are they saying about this? So this has pretty widespread support outside of Congress as well, which is great to see um, from public advocacy groups like the Consumer Federation of America and groups that um, are kind of more uh, technologically focused like public citizen and public knowledge. Um, and the industry also really supports it, which isn't too surprising given that they've already taken steps to combat robocalls. Um, you know, industries like it when they're already doing things that may cost them money and then Congress decides that, you know, everyone should have to do it in the industry. So um, Verizon, for instance, put out a really strong statement of support in the bill. Um, and uh, you're likely to see other carriers support it. For instance, um, at and and Comcast earlier this year uh, uh, accomplished um, a test proving that their new um, caller ID authentication technology will work between carriers. So that was important for blocking call spoofing. Um, so given that the industry is already taking these steps <clears throat> and working with FCC, um, they really shouldn't have any problem with these new laws either. All right, it'll be interesting, Stephanie, to see uh, what comes out of this. And of course, we'll have follow-up on it here on ZDNet. Thanks for watching.